Father, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you thanks, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, that we could come into your house, Lord. We could worship you, we could lift up our hands unto you, O God. We are so thankful to you, O God, for all that you have done, O God, and all that you are doing, Father, and all that you are about to do, O God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the freedom of worship that we have, Lord, that we could come into your house, Lord, and we thank you that in your house and in your presence, oh God, there is fullness of joy, and there is right, at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst because you said, Lord, where the twos and the trees are guarded, Lord. There you are in the midst, oh God, and we thank you, Father, Lord, for your presence with us, oh God. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to just envelop this place, to fill this place, to fill your people, oh God. Lord, as we worship, oh God. Lord, help us, oh God, that we will not, oh God, Lord, think about the things that went by, oh God. Lord, we will not allow thoughts, oh God, to... Lord, to flood our minds, but we will concentrate. We will concentrate upon you, O oh God. We will concentrate, God, on your goodness, O oh God. We will concentrate, O oh God, on you, Lord, because you are in control of everything, O oh God. Lord, and we will give you all our praise and we will give you all our worship this morning, O oh God. Lord, we ask that you would have your way, Lord. Touch your people this morning, O oh God. Lord, strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them today, God. Renew their strength, Father God. Lord, lift them up, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We say that we are strong. We say that we are strong in you and in the power of your might, Lord. And we ask that you have your way this morning as we commit this entire service into your hands, Lord. Touch your servant, Lord, and use him for your glory, O oh God. Lord, let our words be, O oh God, of edification and comfort and, Lord, and strength, O oh God, to build up, O oh God, to encourage, O oh God. Lord, and to exhort, Father God, we ask that you would have your way, Lord, as we commit this entire service into your hands. We give you praise, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in Jesus. Hallelujah. Born, born, born. Born, born, and born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, and born again. Thank God I'm born again. Hallelujah. Born, born, and born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, and born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born of the water. Born of the water, spirit and the blood. Spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, spirit and the blood, thank God I'm born again. And I am under the rock. And I am under the rock. Hallelujah. The rock is higher than I. Jehovah hide me. Under 
Everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus name so sweet. Everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus name so Jesus name. Jesus name so sweet. Emmanuel name so sweet. Jesus name so sweet. Emmanuel name. Everybody walk and talk. And everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus name. Everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus name. So everybody sweet. and everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus name so sweet. Everybody walk and talk about Jesus. Jesus I've got my mind made up. So and I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. I want to see my Jesus someday And I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Because I want to see my Jesus someday Hallelujah Hallelujah We worship you Lord We worship you Hallelujah Hallelujah
morning to live, Lord, for you alone. You are worthy, Lord. We worship you, Lord. This is our heart's desire to worship you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our midst. Hallelujah. Psalms 42 says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. This is a psalm that is yearning for God in the midst of distress. And it says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Amen.
place every burden at your feet this morning. As I bring before you your people, every need, every desire. Lord, everything that they are going through right now, we place it at your feet. Lord God, every need for healing, every financial breakthrough. Lord God, every problem, Lord, every situation, we place it at your feet. Father, we long for you this morning. We long to be close to you, Lord. Lord, you are our groom and we are your bride. Lord, we long to worship you. Father, help us to trust in you. Help us to understand how much you love us. The word says how deep, how wide, how high is your love for us. That you sent your son to die for us. Lord God, to make a way. Father, we just thank you this morning that you have already made the way. praise hallelujah this morning we like to pick up the offering
You all may have your seats as we turn over to the moderator. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, we just want to welcome back Sister Joanna as she comes to give us a special song this morning. Hallelujah. This morning, the name of my song is <clears throat> Yet Not I, But You Christ in Me. And the song says, To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. And this song has really been a blessing to me, especially during my time of COVID. You all may know that my whole family had it, and it was really scary. But I thank God today for keeping us, and for me standing here is a miracle. You know, because sometimes at the, in the nights especially, yeah, I thought that I would not have made it. And I just hope this song bless you all just like it did me. Amen? of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I Jesus 
for he has said that he will bring me home and day by day i know he will renew me until i stand with joy before the throne to this i hold my hope is only jesus all the glory the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Joanna and Damien, for that beautiful song. Hallelujah. We thank God for the talent that he has given us. Amen. He has blessed us with uh, wonderful talents and people who can, you know, do things for his glory and his honor. Amen. And whatever we do, all glory belongs to God. It's not in ourselves, you know. I mean, yeah, we do it. But if God did not enable us, we would not have been able to do it. Amen? So we give God the praise and the glory and honor for all that he has done. Amen? It is so good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. We are so glad to have you all. And uh, I pray that God will bless you. Uh, tremendously this morning. Amen. Before I go to the word of the Lord, I just want to have maybe two testimony. You can stay right, stand where, where you are, right where you are, and just share a word of testimony with us quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Mm -hmm. True. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God works in mysterious ways. Amen. Uh, many times when we don't expect it and even when we don't understand it, yet God is there working for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads as we look to the Lord this morning. 
Our Heavenly Father and eternal and righteous God, we do give God praise. We give you thanks, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do. Father, this morning we pray, O oh God, that you will, Lord, enlighten us as we study your word. Give us wisdom and give us understanding. I pray that you will help us, dear Father, that we will receive not just the letter, but the spirit of your word. Lord, I pray that your word will have free course in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, this year, uh, you know, we usually have Thanksgiving in the month of November. And so we did not set aside a date for Thanksgiving. And not only that, things are so different, you know, in terms of the gathering and, and stuff like that. Uh, but however, we, we still want to give thanks on the unto the Lord because the Lord has been good to us. And uh, so I'm designating um, two Sundays from now to be thanksgiving. We're going to use that opportunity on Sunday morning to give thanks unto the Lord for what he has done. Now, we are restricted with time and, and all of that. And so, what we would like to do is uh, for you to, um, well, we will have the whiteboard, you know, up here. And we would like for you to write out, you know, um, what you are thankful for. Um, how has God been good to you throughout this year? you know, write out something. It doesn't have to be a whole two page or a whole page, you know, just something small. And uh, you can design, design the paper as well. You know, it doesn't have to be a square piece of paper. You can design it, you know, shape it as you um, desire. But write it in such a way that people can read it. And so on that morning, we're going to have you come and stick it on the board. We will provide the, the tape for you. And, and you can come and uh, put it on the board as we give thanks. It's an, an opportunity for us to acknowledge our Lord and Savior for what he has done in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I look forward for that. And also on that special day, you can give a special offering as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not, um, you're not demanding anything, but I'm just saying that's an opportunity. You know, you can, you can sow a seed for something that you are praying for as well. So on that day, you say, Lord, this offering is a seed. How about we just make it a seed offering? Huh? All right? So that morning, it's going to be a seed offering. So whatever you're going to be praying for and believing God for, we're going to sow that seed towards that. Amen? And we're going to give God thanks for his bountiful blessings in our lives. Amen? Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 can I get a little bit more on this, this mic, please? I feel like I'm not hearing myself. Praise the Lord. All right. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Last week, I talked about the unchanging God, and I read from Numbers where it says that God is not a man that he should lie. That if he said it, he will do it, and if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. We are talking about the unchanging God. And when we read in the Old Testament, we read of his mighty acts in the Old Testament. And sometimes uh, we marvel at these things. For example, the Bible says that one time they were chopping 
in the forest. They were cutting wood. And one of the cutters, his axe head fell in the, in the river. And, uh, you know, uh, so they didn't know what to do. And the prophet came and he, he threw a leaf in the, in the river and, and the axe had floated up and he picked it up, you know. And, and when we read about the exodus from Egypt, that the children of Israel came and they, they were confronted with the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army chasing them. And God said to Moses, what it is that you have in your hand? And he says, well, a rod. And he said, stretch out the rod. And as he stretched out the rod, the Bible said that the sea parted. And there was a clear way going through and going forward onto the other side. Now, there are many more miracles I could cite and I could talk about. But the point that I want to make is that God is the same. If he did it for the children of Israel, he can do it for you. As a matter of fact, when we look in the New Testament, we see a dimension of God's power in a different way. God actually got personal with people. In the Old Testament, in most cases, when he performed miracles, he performed it for the people, for the benefit of everybody. But in the New Testament, we see that he got personal and he performed miracles for individuals. We are reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. That the Bible says she tried all the doctors and she did everything possible, all that she thought that she can do, and nothing got better. As a matter of fact, the Bible said she grew worse. But she said within herself, if I could only get close to him and I could touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. And somehow she found her way through the crowd, got behind him, touched his garment, and the Bible says immediately virtue went out from him and healed her. And she was afraid. When he spun around and he said, who touched me? Now, she knew, well, I don't know at that point in time if she felt that she did something wrong. <laughs> you know, can you imagine you creeping up to get a touch and as you touch the hem of his garment, he spun around and said, who touched me? I believe anybody will, will get frightened. But, he told her, he said, daughter, your fate had made you whole. So Jesus introduced uh, to people faith. Introduced to them that their faith can cause things to happen. That he said that with faith, all things are possible to him that believe. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to the sycamore tree, be uprooted and be planted into the sea, and it shall be done. Now, sometimes we think that Jesus was talking, about, you know, in a parable, and he was talking figuratively, but he wasn't. That is the level of, of what can happen when a person has faith. When he says, with faith, all things are possible, it means uh, all things. Now, I know that many a times we face situations in our lives uh, and there are certain things that we encounter and we overcome them easily and we pray and we believe God and, and it happens. And then there are some things that we encounter and when we pray, it seems like uh, we are hitting a wall 
and it seems like nothing is happening and it, it's not going through. But I want you to know that we got to pursue and, and we got to stand fast and stand firm and hold on to the word of God and remember that he is the same God that shut the mouth of the, the lions in the den when Daniel was thrown in it. He's the same God that took the burn out of the fire when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thrown into the fire. Hallelujah. That the Bible says the heat from the furnace scorched the men who threw them into the furnace. But yet, these men were untouched, unharmed, their hair wasn't singed, nothing happened to them. Why? Because God was with them. And I submit to you this morning that in the middle of your situation, God is with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. But he's going to be with you. Throughout this pandemic, God has been with us. Amen. I can testify of that fact. When I think of the goodness of God, sometimes it brings me to tears. Because, uh, you know, I, I feel so unworthy. But then again, I thank God that uh, I could never be worthy. I thank God that all uh, that I have received uh, is his gifts uh, and his favors uh, upon me. Because tell you the truth, if I have to be worthy to receive from God, I will not receive anything. Because of his favor. We live in a changing world. Everything is changing. In the past two years, we have seen, seen the changes uh, dramatically, not only in our nation, but throughout the world. I mean, look at us. We have to be sitting in church with masks. You have to be driving your car with masks. And you know, many times you know, think that we think that it's going to be better. But it's not. I was listening to the radio this morning and the announcer was, you know, giving us a little report, a segment of the PM address yesterday. And uh, what I got from what he said is that the PM is saying, listen, we have vaccine. We made it available to people. We beg people and some people don't want it. Uh, no problem. Uh, if you end up in ICU or somewhere in the hospital, it's not our fault. It's your own. And I agree with him. It's your own. So these are the changes uh, that is happening in the world today. I want to tell you that season change, uh, weather pattern changes, nothing remains the same. Uh, the boundaries of our nation, it changes. Uh, work uh, and the way we live uh, is changing. Some people have to work from home now. Everything is changing. Even people change. Do you know when people get money, they change? <laughs> money, which seems to be a, ble a blessing, somehow turns out to be a curse for people. Because you know, when some people, when they get money, they operate different. When they get money, they don't walk the street anymore. They don't know their neighbor anymore. They live in a different world. Money changes people. Some people who are good and people who are nice, when they get money, they, their whole behavior and their attitude, their personality, everything change. So we are living in a changing world. And these changes take place in our lives. We change physically. We change emotionally. You know, with, with, with the seasons of life, we change. We change in our ideas, our goals, or even our convictions. I, I, 
as a matter of fact, as Christians, when we now got saved, we had certain convictions and, and, and we held on to certain things. Then five, ten year, years later, we don't see anything wrong with that. Our convictions. It has changed. Since God is changing, unchanging, some things will never change. For example, the wages of sin will never change. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And you could do what you want. That will not change. See, because the Bible tells us that God's word is forever settled. It is forever established. And times and seasons may change and people may change. But God's word will not change. And, and, and this is why I have a problem with a lot of teachings today. Because let's take, for example, Sodom and Gomorrah. We read about Sodom and Gomorrah that the Bible says that God destroyed that twin city because of the sins of that twin city. The people were so engulfed and engrossed in sin that they didn't want to hear. Abraham went and begged and pleaded with them, but they didn't want to hear. That the Bible says that God sent two angels to bring Lot and his family out of that sin city. And the, angel, the, the men of that city wanted to have their way with the angels. Now I want you to understand the depravity that existed in these two nations, or this twin city rather. Many a times when we think about angels, we picture a nice lady with wings. But do you realize that most times when the Bible talks about angels, it's talking about a, man, a, a male or a man or, I don't know how to put it, a masculine gender. So these angels that went down there wasn't female angels. Men. And the men wanted to have their way with the angels. That Lot came out to them and said, listen, men, do not do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters. Take them, have their way with them. But do not do this wicked thing. And the man said to them, said to Lot, he said, no, we don't want your daughters. We want these men. That's how depraved that city was. And God destroyed that city for their depravity and their sin. Do you think that God is going to accept it now? He took a stand against it then. Do you think that he's going to change his mind today and accept that behavior? And some people want to bring that behavior in the church. Some people want to change the rules. See, we, we got to wake up and realize that it is the same God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same to yesterday, today, and forever. And he's not going to change. The wages of sin is still the same. I could go on and give you a long discourse of sin and all that has happened. But I want to tell you that uh, it will not change. What you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you will of the spirit reap eternal life. These, these things remain the same. And somehow in this 21st century, you know, we, we believe that, you know, things are going to change 
you know, God is going to mellow out. You know, because so many things are happening. We are, are discovering certain things, you know, and, and it's going to mellow out. I want to tell you that God is not going to change. One of the things I observe is that our language is changing. Especially with, with cell phone and, and the, how they call it, I am texting and I message and, and all of these things. And, you know, <laughs> I was listening to a comedian and he says, he says, now, he says, because they're giving you a small phone with small numbers and the children, their fingers so big that they cannot text properly. So they text short. He says that they have a thing now they call Tano. He said, well, what is Tano? He said, well, Tano is when you ask a man to make a call and he said, Tano. What I mean? It means that it had no, it had no money. Tano. And so, <laughs> he said, he said um, when they text in now, it has something, they, they text verb, BRB. So, what, what is verb? So, be right back. See, and, and so the language is changing. People are inventing new words. You ever come across a new word and you say, well, what is that? I never heard that before. They're inventing new words. So everything is changing in this world, but God's word will not change. You see where God, where, where sin is concerned and God's stand concerning sin, it remains the same. Sin will be punished. It will be judged. You know, we talk a lot about forgiveness. And, and this is a kind of lengthy discourse. But I just want to go into it quickly and come back out. You know, we talk about forgiveness. And we say, okay, God, forgive my sin. I pray and I ask God and he forgive my sin. And so we got to understand something. God did not forgive sin. You read Isaiah, the Bible says that he, he bruised Jesus and he punished Jesus for sin. When all our sin was placed upon Jesus, God judged sin. He judged our sin in Jesus. So as far as God is concerned, your sin is paid for. Your sin, my sin, is judged in Jesus. But you see, because Jesus paid it all, Jesus can now forgive our sins. So we need to understand, when we talk about salvation is free, salvation is not free, Jesus paid for it. You see, like, if, if you take me to one of these fancy restaurants, expensive restaurants, right, and we ate, and you paid. You paid the bill when it come. $1,600. You paid the bill. Can I walk away and say I got a free meal? I didn't get a free meal. I got a free meal from you. But the meal was paid for. It wasn't paid for by me. But it was paid for. And so we need to understand, where sin is concerned, God will not change. If he punish it back then, he's going to punish it today. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah, he's going to judge you today. He judged the children of Israel, he's going to judge you and I today. 
His word concerning sin remains the same. All right, so I just checking on my time. Last week I got real messed up. I'm sorry. Secondly, the law of harvest will not change. Though we live in a changing world, the law of harvest will not change. Sowing and reaping remains. Galatians says, be not deceived that God is not mocked. What a man sow, that he will also reap. Sowing and reaping is a law and I like to call it a universal law because it applies to everybody. Whether we, whether we are talking about a crop or we're talking about our ways in life. But what you sow, you're going to reap. Here is something that we fail to realize. When we sow in the natural, we don't reap exact. You reap more than what you sow. If you take one grain of corn and sow that in the ground, and that grow and produce, it's not going to produce one grain of corn. It will produce several heads of corn. And sometimes one, one corn tree, you, f you find about four or five heads of corn in it. And I never really taught to count how much grains you get in one, <laughs> one head. You see, my point is, that one grain that you sow it multiply, and when time to reap, you reap an abundance. Now, think about that in life. When you sow good to people, you're going to reap an abundance of good. Not necessarily from the same person, but you're going to reap that in life because you have sown that. You have been kind and you have been good. You have been, you have been helpful. And so people will also be helpful and kind and good to you. On the other hand, when you sow wickedness, guess what's going to happen? Other people who you don't know will be wicked to you for no reason whatsoever. And when that happened, then we ask, what did I do to these people? You did nothing to them. You just reaping what you sow. You just getting what you deserve. You see, we have a tendency to only look at things uh, one way. So when it comes to sowing and reaping, we only look at the good. Well, I did good, so good should come back. But what about the bad? What about the wickedness? What about the evil? And some of these things that, you know, we, we are unconcerned about. We did it, but it didn't resonate in our mind. Let me tell you, you look in the Bible and see the seeds that people sow. It came back to haunt them. Look at David, King David, and the things that he did. There was chaos in his family as a result of what he did. Look at Abraham. God gave Abraham a promise. He said, listen man, I'm going to give you a son. 
The Bible said that when Sarah heard that in the tent, she laughed. And God said to Abraham, why is Sarah laughing? And then Sarah denied. She said, no, no, I didn't laugh. And as time go by, she became impatient and she said to Abraham, she said, listen, you know what? I know God said, you know, but nothing happening. Look, 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 my handmaid. Take my handmaid. Go in into, unto her. And we may, we may have a family and we may have a son from her. Hagar was a servant. Okay, so you went in under her and she bore Ishmael. And Ishmael was the firstborn. But he was not the, 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 the son of promise. And do, and do you know that between Ishmael and Isaac, there was confusion? When Sarah couldn't take it anymore, she said, listen, get this woman and her son out of here. She started the thing, you know. I was going to say something, but I need to, <laughs> I need to curb, curb that. <laughs> but she came to Abraham. Abraham. Abraham wasn't even thinking about that. You know, there was no inclination from Abraham. Abraham was patient, waiting on God. She who came. Abraham went and did what she said. They had a son and eventually now chaos. And as a matter of fact, we're still suffering from that today. See? We have to hold on to God's word and know that God will not lie and he will not change. So sowing and reaping, the law of sowing and reaping, it will not change. We reap what we sow. You know, it, it is impossible to sow sin and reap blessing. And many people want to do that. They want to sow sin and, and they want blessings to come. Listen, you have to know how to sow. And in sowing, you have to guard what you sow. If you do not guard what you sow, Evil will overcome it. When you plant corn, long ago, we used to plant corn and peas together. How many of you know that? Know about that? Because both will grow. The corn will grow faster than the peas. And so when you reap the crop of corn and all of them die out, you have a crop of peas. So when Christmas, Christmas comes around, you have peas. See? So now, if you plant the corn and peas and you don't tend to it, the grass, the shrubs, and everything else around it will overgrow it. Now, I don't understand the intricacies of this. But have you ever noticed that things that you plant, right, seem to take a longer time to grow, but things that you don't plant and they cut down and you want to get rid of, those things seem to grow fast. <laughs> now, these are things that we need to observe and learn a lesson from it. 
when you sow, if you just leave it unattended to, evil will overcome it. So for example, when you sow seeds in the kingdom of God, you need to protect that. You need to water that. You need to pray. You need to bind the enemy. Some people, they sow a seed for something. They sow the seed and then they walk away. And leave it. And then nothing happened. And they, but, but I sowed a seed. Go back and look at it. When you go back and look at it, you can't find it because it is overgrown with thorns and thistles. Let me tell you, we need to water it. We need to water it with prayer. As a matter of fact, look at some of the bushes that grow. You ever have to go and water that to grow it? Watch this one, eh? watch this one. All the grass and then growing, you never see bacha cut it down. <laughs> you plant some corn, you plant some peas, a body, or, or whatever you, you plant there, eh? and sometimes bacha grass and <laughs> cut everything. You have, to, you have to cut the grass around it to keep it. You have to mulch it. You have to mold it. You have to water it. You have to give it a little salt. You have to put a little uh, insecticide and stuff like that. Why? Be because you have to protect what you sow. And let me tell you, it's the same in the spiritual you saw something there and it's growing nice and you, yeah, it's growing nice and so on and you forget it. Next thing you know what, the devil passed and cut down everything. The law of sowing and reaping will not change. It remains. What you sow, you will reap. Third, the love of God will not change. There's nothing that you and I can do to make God unlove you. I, I don't know if that's a word, but I hope you get what I'm saying. There's nothing that you and I can do to make God stop loving you. Listen, if you walk out on Jesus now, he will still love you. You might go to hell, but he will still love you going to hell. The love of God will not change. You see, God doesn't love you because of you. He loves you because of himself. The Bible says that he is love. He is love. If you're serving God and you backslide and you start playing the fool and you know you start indulging in things that you're not supposed to indulge in, I want to tell you God will still love you, but you will indulge in that and end up in hell and he still loves you. See, because of the love of God, we take advantage of his love and mercy. And so we continue. So you walk out on God and you start doing craziness and involving yourself in things that you're not supposed to. And the judgment of God has come upon you because he loves you more than he's willing to judge you. And so you tell yourself, well, everything okay. Because you know what? 
if, if this was wrong, he would have judged me already. See, but, but you need to understand. Mercy triumphs over judgment. God is more inclined to love you than to judge you. He's more inclined to love you than to punish you. And sometimes we think that, you know, because we are not punished, well, you know, everything is okay. And we try on the fact that God loves us. But, but you and I need to understand something here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. You and I need to understand while God loves you and you're in your sin, He loves you. But His judgment for sin remains the same. His love remains the same and His stand for sin remains the same. You have to decide where you are. Are you going to position yourself under the love of God? Or are you going to position yourself in sin? Because I want to tell you when you remain in sin, judgment is coming. It might be slow. But it's going to be sure. Let me tell you, we cannot afford to forget where God brought us from. Cannot forget, afford to forget what God has done for us. God has blessed us and kept us. He has been merciful to us. He has been long-suffering. He, he, he tolerated many things for us, from us. But don't ever think that because God loves you, he's going to bend the rules for you and he's going to bend his word for you. He will not. You want to play the fool? Go ahead. <laughs> like the PM. We've done all that we can. If you want to not take it, then by all means, it's still available. But we're not going to force you. But if you end up in the hospital, it's not our fault. And let me tell you, that position is the same with God. I love you. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. And it is available for you. But if you don't want that, then by all means, when you end up in hell, it's not my fault. We are serving an unchanging God. And we need to understand that there are certain things that we think God will change his mind. God don't change his mind. He remains the same. Bow your heads with me this morning. Father and God, we do thank you for the power of your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are an unchanging God. You will not bow to the will of man. You will not succumb to the, the will of man. But Lord, your position remains the same. I pray that you will help us this morning, Father. Help us to see and to understand that. So that we do not take advantage of your mercy and love and compassion to us. I pray that you will help us that we will get our act together. Lord, many times we have drifted. We have drifted, oh God, and Lord, think well, everything is okay. And, and we judge by the fact that you did not punish us and think that everything is okay, I pray that you will help us this morning that we will wake up. 
we will wake up and realize uh, that you love us, but you will also punish sin. You are the same God that loves us, but you are the same God that must punish sin. And I pray, Father, that you will help us, that we will change our behavior, change our attitude, change our position, and that we will submit to you, O oh God, to your will and to your purpose. Have your way in our lives today, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. As we remain in this attitude of prayer. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what obstacle is standing before you. But this morning, all things are possible. Every earthly thing has to submit to the will and the way of God. And though the devil tried to impose his will upon your life, upon you, upon your family, all of that is subject to change. Those of you that are sitting right here this morning and those of you that are viewing online right now, I say to you that your circumstances is subject to change. And as I pray this morning for you, I want you to receive from the hand of God. I want you to envision that situation changing. I want you to see it changing. And as we pray this morning, I want you to believe God for change. Father, this morning I lift your people as they sit here in this congregation and those that are viewing online. This morning, oh God, I ask that you will touch them. I ask, oh God, for your anointing and your power to break every yoke of the enemy. Destroy the powers of the evil one. Destroy the works of darkness and bring change in their circumstances. My God, their physical condition will change right now in the name of Jesus. The sick will be healed and the oppressed will be free. Father, in the name of Jesus, their financial situation is going to change right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke the spirit of poverty. Lord, we rebuke the work of darkness. And Father, I pray for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Those that are tormented by evil spirits. Lord, we bind the work of the evil one. We bind the works of darkness right now. And Father, we thank you for healing, deliverance, and prosperity. We thank you for change in our circumstances. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe that this morning, say amen. Hallelujah. I trust that you have been blessed this morning by the word of God. And remember, no matter what the situation is, it is subject to change because we serve an unchanging God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Remember, on Tuesday night, we're online. On Wednesday, prayer meeting on Zoom. Prayer meeting and Bible study. Uh, Friday night, family night, and back here again on Sunday. Amen? May God continue to bless you. Remember, our YouTube page is up. For those of you who don't like to be on Facebook, we are streaming on, uh, on YouTube as well. So, log in on YouTube. Check out our page and be blessed by our ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We look forward to see you back here again in Jesus' name. Have a, a blessed week.